everyone. Um, my name is Natalie. Thank you for joining us for this week's sit rep. Um, before I introduce our guests for this week, as always, um, both Shalia and myself uh, talk a little bit about our services here at the Veterans One Stop and Military Veteran Peer Network. So as many of you all know, um, MVPN is housed inside of the Veterans One Stop, and we offer a variety of resources, uh, that being one-on-one, um, -on -one, uh, I'm sorry, peer support services, which include one-on-one -on -one peer support, which we like to call like our battle buddy type program where you and the individual that we link you up with, typically our volunteers, um, get, you get to decide when and how often you speak to them, kind of like a supplemental um, type of support if um, maybe you're not ready for counseling, whatever the case may be, you wanna talk to someone who has similar experiences, um, that would be one of the routes. We also offer peer support groups and we offer a variety of peer support groups. Um, we have Yarnaholics, which is our crochet group, Pathfinders, our um, general peer support group for all of our service members and veterans. We have um, the other side, which is for family members and dependents. Um, we have midday movement, which we hold in the middle of the day, quick 30 minutes to just move, um, move your body around, get some blood flowing. Uh, we also have Tai Chi, um, which our guest for this week actually teaches. And um, I'm blanking. Haven, which is harassment, assault, violence, as now for anyone who's experienced any type of sexual harassment or sexual trauma. We have Man Cave, um, a group dedicated for men. Um, and then I feel like I'm missing one. We just have a, we just have a lot that I can't even remember all of them. But our goal is always to ensure that we have a variety of of uh, peer support groups that help. Um, you know, just kind of aid anxiety, depression, just supplemental to whatever the needs of our veteran service members or their families. Um, we also assist with resources. So if you need claims assistance, housing, rental and utility, where to do your claims, um, where to do your taxes for free, we can link you up to those resources, kind of like a 211 to where you're not running around the city trying to get numbers or trying to call people. We will um, provide that warm handoff. Um, we also provide a variety of suicide prevention and awareness trainings. Um, as far as the Veterans One Stop, we uh, do have counseling services, and that is with individual, family, marriage um, services. We also have housed at the Veterans One Stop, our education post, which is Grand Canyon University and Western Governors University. We also have TVC Claims Department um, here, and we just have a variety of resources. Um, if you need more information or would like to sign up for any of these uh, things that I just covered right now, um, please feel free to reach out to myself or Shalia. So without further ado, our guest speaker for this week is Miss Melissa Harcrow, and she is TVC's West, I'm sorry, yeah, Women Veteran Coordinator for West Texas, right? Okay. Yes, thank you. No problem. Like I said, everybody kind of messes <laughs> it up. It is kind of a long title. Um, but yes, I am the Women Veterans Program Coordinator for West Texas with the Texas Veterans Commission. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to, to give a brief overview of our services today. Um, <clears throat> this will be um, uh, a, a little slideshow. Um, it's not too long. Um, and some of it is a little repetitive, but we'll go over it briefly because I know we, you know, sometimes people just want to watch a quick video and be done with it. So <laughs> can I go ahead and share, share my screen? Yeah, you're okay. good to share. All right. So let me get that. And let's see. I don't like when the slides are on the side. Okay. How does it look? on your end can you see um, like i can see the slides on my end yeah like on the side so i think if you go to slideshow the one of the tabs up there slideshow you'll be able to oh right here yeah and then on the left side it says from beginning you should be able to have it there 
Mm -hmm. Didn't work. How about this? No? Kind of. Okay, it's fine. I think there's a delay on my <laughs> end. <laughs> it's no problem. Um, I just don't like it when it's on the side, but it's not, it's not a big issue. So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> Women Veterans Program. So we, uh, we are, well, this is your, the Texas Veterans Commission. I'll, I'll um, refer to them as the TVC from now, for now. Um, they advocate for veterans uh, in Texas, um, families and survivors. Um, now related to the Women Veterans Program, we ensure, and I, I don't, can you see this little thing here? There's a little what? box here on my end. It's yes, distracting maybe. me. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why that's there. Sorry about that. We ensure that uh, women veterans have equitable access to the benefits and services that they deserve, not just state, but also um, we assist with federal benefits as well. Um, so right now, this is uh, this is what our estimated um, women veteran population growth looks like. Uh, we have right now just about probably by the end of the year, we'll have about 207,000 and you can see that by the end of next year we're going we're projected to grow about another uh, 3,000 or so um, so we're growing um, I believe Texas has the greatest the largest population of veterans in the country uh, and women veterans in the nation are the fastest growing population of uh, veterans as well so next, um, you know, if you're asking, well, what is West Texas? This is how we define our um, districts. So all of the blue is me. Um, I have a lot of rural areas. And of course, this is El Paso here. And we also have our North Texas, which the biggest city there is Dallas. Um, East Texas, your largest city there is Austin. And then South Texas, um, has Houston, I believe, and San Antonio. Um, so each district, we have women veteran coordinators for each district, and we have our director as well. So there's five of us total. So anyone you reach out to, you're gonna you're gonna get a hold of one of us. And something else I'd like to to brag about is that we're the only state in the country that has a dedicated women veterans. Um, program, meaning we're not assigned to other tasks, other titles, other duties. This is what we do. This is our job. We do outreach. We do um, presentations just like I'm doing here for you, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, so here's some of our program duties again. I'm sorry about this little thing there. Um, providing assistance to our women veterans. So. In short, uh, it's more of like whatever the Texas Veterans Commission provides. Um, if anybody out there is not familiar, the commission has multiple programs. We have entrepreneurship, um, education services, claims assistance. As Natalie said, there's a, a representative at, at the MVPN's location to assist with that. We have healthcare advocates that, that are embedded in, I think, almost every major VA clinic. Um, mm. We have all kinds of services out there for our veterans, and the Women Veterans Program will connect you to those services. And if there's anything that um, a veteran needs that the commission does not provide, we'll will connect them to local resources that do have um, those services. So for example, maybe a veteran needs assistance with um, legal, they need a lawyer. Um, most likely we'll refer them to, for example, like I would refer them to the Texas Rio Grande mm -hmm. um, Legal Aid. And there's, I think there's like two other nonprofits out there. Um, the downside with that though, is that there are a lot of things out there that we do just generally our communities rely on nonprofits to fill in gaps and there's always a gap. Um, so unfortunately, sometimes it's difficult because there's things that people need that um, we, we don't have uh, services for and I like we can't find that or 
it's just not out there. Um, mm -hmm. But we do our best because then that helps us identify what gaps there are. And then as you see on this slide, we, you know, we're reviewing these programs and we do research and we make these recommendations to our agency um, executive director. Excuse me, I was trying to change the slide. Some of our activities, advocacy and public awareness. This is more for um, of, of women veterans because, you know, nowadays people might be like, well, even then, even always, right? Why women? Why women veterans? Well, a lot of women who've served in the military don't want to um, claim their status as veterans for multiple reasons. Maybe they were told they're not a veteran because they're not a man um, or made to feel less than or because they didn't serve in combat or, um, you know, for example, it wasn't until 1977 that that the women's army corps or air corps from world war one was uh considered veterans so for decades they they never got their veteran status and they didn't get um those benefits and that reverberates throughout the decades too so part of our job is to make people aware like women out there there are women out there who have served in the military um, not everything you see has to always be a, a man in uniform. It can always be a woman in uniform. Um, collaboration, for example, here, collaborating with MVPN to share with you our information, our resources, and what it is that we do. Um, the research, the education, honor, recognition. The big one here is Women Veterans Day. Um, we try to put something on every year, and that's June 12th of every year. Um, the state of Texas did designate June 12th as Women Veterans Day and um, our Women Veterans Report, and I'll go over that one later. Um, these are just some examples of our advocacy and public awareness, uh, community engagement boards. I'm personally am in, uh, on a couple of, of boards in the community. Um, some of our coordinators are as well within their areas, social media. I'm big on social media. I'm big on sharing stuff on social media. Um, and I think that's how a lot of information does get get shared. Moving on to collaborations. My um, coworkers in Austin and Dallas and San Antonio are very lucky to have Dress for Success um, nonprofit organization. We don't, but maybe one day they'll come, you know, but that's a great program for our women veterans. Uh, who, like me, even though I've been out for 10 years, I don't know how to dress uh, for the job. Honestly, I do my best. I, I, I rely on Pinterest for, for my um, outfit ideas. So. <laughs> so this one will help, you know, sometimes they'll do headshots. They'll help you with interviews, things like that. The Texas Veterans Land Boards, uh, many times we'll collaborate at events with them. The VA, like I said, we'll ha we have healthcare advocates who are embedded in the VAs um, and even um, claims officers as well. So this one, this is the slide where we, we go into the, um, the report. There's a, there's a report that we submit every other year, I believe, to the Texas legislature, and it does go directly to the lieutenant governor and the governor, and we participate in, in research. Um, and these are some of the universities that we've um, worked with to gather that information. And I've been asked several times, what is the Center for Women Veterans? And that's actually a, a division of the VA. Many people don't know that. There is a Center for Women Veterans um, and they do put out a lot of information, a lot of research, um, and it's, it's very helpful um, for, for us especially. Now, education, this is just some examples. Um, just various topics to women veterans. And here's some examples of our honors and recognition ceremonies. So our first one was in 2018. We had an event at the Capitol. And then, you know, you see some, most of it's virtual because of what happened with uh, the COVID. And um, last year we had a Women Veterans Service Project. And this year we're going to have, um, I think we're going to have something 
I don't know if it's going to be in Dallas or San Antonio, but I am also planning an event here in El Paso. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's see some more honor and recognition. Um, if you know of a woman veteran who who you feel like deserves to be honored or get some sort of recognition, let us know. Uh, here in El Paso County, we had um, our first woman veteran uh, appointed as El Paso County Veteran of the Year. I mean, for me, that's a big deal because every single one, of course, was a man before her. And um, many times that's that's who people have in their mind as a veteran is the male, the male, the male. And we need to be sure to listen to her story and recognize her service and acknowledge her experience. And this, this is how we do that. Um, community outreach campaigns, just, just so many different ways that we do this. Um, we, we're, cut, we're having some women veteran town halls coming up, which will also help us with our research. Every month we have events. We do one where we invite um, other resources around the state to speak. And, and all of our events are pretty much virtual, um, unless otherwise noted, because we are a statewide program. You know, like me, for example, as I said earlier, I have a rural area and a lot of people don't um, have the ability to come in person. Um, and I'm based in El Paso and I can't always go over there. Um, so again, so providing significant information, excuse me, on significant contributions to women, increasing awareness of groups um, and other information that's out there. Many people don't know what is out there. And I learn every day some uh, things we've done regarding community outreach and advocacy. I'm not invisible campaign. Um, the, that one, I don't know if these pictures are still posted at the Capitol, but they were taking, they took pictures of some women veterans and posted at the Capitol with information about their service. And women can still go, they can go to our website and you'll see that in a minute and register their service and you're on a registry that shows many it's very similar to if anyone is uh, familiar with the military women's memorial it's kind of the same thing who you are where you've been what you did how long were you in the service um and here's here's a little more about that women veterans report now here we do make also recommendations um on how to address the issues that we found one of the one of the most unique ones, I think something that struck me when I first started was instead of asking, are you a veteran? Asking, did you serve in the military? As I noted earlier, many women veterans don't recognize that they're a veteran, um, but I've learned since that that also goes for males too, because many of them don't want to bring up uh, their experiences, um, whatever's gone on with them. So that's kind of unique because it's not just a woman veteran issue. That's also just a veteran in general. And then here's some of our common requests. Um, our top one probably is claims. Yeah, I would say that's that's our top one. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of requests for child care and, and that is probably a nationwide problem, honestly, and um, especially with Texas. Um, and hopefully we we can work on getting that taken care of. Um, we do get a lot of requests for um, emergency financial assistance. Now the, the commission doesn't provide individual assistance, financial assistance, but we provide grants to organizations that provide services to veterans. Um, I haven't had anyone confuse that yet, but I just want to put that out there just so people are aware of. Some of our goals here, um, we recently implemented Friday morning appointments and every Wednesday we have virtual office hours. I mean, you can reach out to us anytime, but virtual office hours means that we're on call uh, virtually and you just jump on the Zoom link and you can talk to one of us and we'll get you connected with whatever it is that you need assistance with. And our last one, we encourage you to identify as veterans, get those benefits, get those services. And then here's a couple ways to reach out. So you can either go 
um, to the TVC uh, website here and then just fill out a contact form. Connect with the WVP, which stands for Women Veterans Program, and then enter your information. Um, please, please, please enter your, your county um, because that helps us determine which district um, you belong to and which coordinator can best uh, assist you. And then here's the office hours, the virtual office hours. When you go to our webpage, the Women Veterans Program webpage, um, you'll just scroll down and there's a virtual office hours box and click it and then you're connected. Really, really easy. And then here's our map again, and then this is just everyone, all of our coordinators. We have Miss Catherine Smith in North Texas. Again, that's around the Dallas area. South Texas is Sharon Stewart. She she has Houston and San Antonio. No, not Houston. That's not true. Houston is east. She has Austin and San Antonio. And then Dr. Ramona Todd in East Texas has um, Houston. And then I, Melissa Harcrow, I have the West Texas area. And then this is our program director, Dr. Crystal Matthews. And that's all I have, unless, of course, there's no questions. No one asks questions but you. But, <laughs> but thank you so much for giving me the time to do this. Yeah, thank you so much, Melissa. I know my, my mom, she's a veteran, and so kind of seeing firsthand growing up kind of some of the trials that women veteran go through it's really good to see that there's the support and acknowledgement for women veterans so yes and we're all women veterans all of us all of us yeah. coordinators are so oh, that's we're nice. there mm -hmm. yeah well thank you so much Melissa I don't have any questions that was very very <laughs> Details, so that was good. That was yeah. good because sometimes I left with questions. So okay, thank you very good, much. Then. That's good. See you soon. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. Take care. Okay.